Hey, so here's a quick 23 weight curse manner I did. Uh, the main reason I'm making this video is because I got a comment asking how to deal with bolstering as a tank. Uh, I feel like weight curse is a pretty good dungeon to display this in because there's definitely some points where bolstering can cause some issues. Uh, the good thing about bolstering is that as a tank, you, you know, you can change the route to really make it not that big of an issue. Obviously, there's some points in the dungeon or in dungeons where bolstering is always going to be an issue but in white cars there's a lot of avoidable things that we can do or to make bolstering less of an issue so first let's talk about talents because there are some things i want to talk about here so uh here's the talents that i ran in the key exactly uh it is a afflicted week i believe so i am running remove corruption and so the one, the big thing I want to talk about is in Whitecrest, realistically, the only thing that's scary as a tank is going to be the uh, the Goliath boss, the tree guy. He does a ton of damage, and you know it's there's going to be points where you might get unlucky. The fire despawns, you can't clear. Oh my god, what do I do? So there's some things you can do in the Guardian Tree to alleviate some issues. Uh, obviously, you know you could take double SI if you feel like that's going to help, but. One of the big things you could do is actually take Earth Warden. Uh, Earth Warden isn't played that often unless it's a Waycrest. I believe uh, there are some high uh, there are some high tier bears running Earth Warden in Waycrest just for the tree boss. Uh, if you want to know how you would pick this up, uh, you would probably drop... Well, what I would do is I would drop After the Wildfire, Vicious Cycle, and uh, either... SI and Ursa or Airstrikes Endurance, and then you just pick it up like this. Try You could try something like this out. Another thing you could do, and I know some people might not like this, but I've been playing around with it, is actually running something similar to the Season 1 build, where you do something like this, that, 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 that. Something like this. Uh, you do have a floater point here with Flashing Claws. You can really pick up anything you want, but... Uh, this is going to be, this obviously grabs you Earth Warden, and you get some extra DR on Bark Skin. This build is also insanely easy to play. You just mangle, thrash, and iron fur, that's pretty much it. You could maul on a single target for more damage, but uh, this is a this is a really good beginner build if you don't want to worry about pressing raise. Uh, this is a massive overall DPS loss, however. I would say probably about 15 to 20k overall DPS loss, so I probably wouldn't run this. I would just stick to something... That looks like this, that I ran in this key. The thing with this build is it's tanky enough and it just does insane damage as you guys uh, can see in the thumbnails and the gameplay. I regularly out DPS the DPS, but yeah, run something like this. Uh, as for gear and trinkets, I actually did run a cheat death trinket this time around. Uh, it's only 476. This is my first time ever running a cheat death in a dungeon because I got it today. Uh, spoiler alert, it doesn't even end up proccing, so it's basically a useless trinket. Of course, I'm running Augury for the insane damage it does. As you can see in that run, it did four, like, just look at that. That's just insane for a trinket, Jesus. Nothing really special. I do have the Rashans now. Uh, I guess we can get into the run and actually talk about why I made this video. So you'll see there's something absolutely insanely terrible that happens here. Uh, let's see if I can find it right here. You guys see that? He went on two, so I, I don't, I'm, I'm, I can't even pre incarn here, which is, you know, like, are you kidding me? So I'm already tilted going into this key. So this first pull here uh, with bolstering is really not an issue. Uh, the only thing that could cause an issue is if the witch that casts his etch gets bolstered like crazy. Someone could just die, but I'm pretty sure we don't even have the one that casts his etch, so this pull is super chill. Uh, make sure you interrupt spirit uh, spirited defense. That can really drag out the pull and make it last way longer. Uh, also, warding candle here. I'm going to try to move the mobs out. Uh, the soul charm in the back is just going to free cast a lot here and uh, stand in the warding candle, so that mob's going to take a little while to kill. Uh, so another question I got was how to do big damage as bear. Uh, the big thing is really it's, it's about rage spending. You know, if you sp can spend most of your rage on raise an AOE or maul in a single target, 
you're probably going to do big damage. Uh, one of the, I've seen one of the biggest mistakes I've seen bears make is one overcapping rage, which it's it's easy to do. I mean, in AOE, if you're not you know looking or managing it, you're not using iron fur as well. You're probably going to be overcapping on rage. But uh, yeah, so spending rage wisely, and another thing is just swiping less. Swipe is essentially a dead global. It really doesn't do anything. It's a it's a very easy global is what I like to say because you know it's no cooldown, no rage cost, and it does damage. Like that that sounds insane, doesn't it? But it, you know in reality it's garbage. It doesn't do anything for you. You're way, way better off using mangle or thrash so you can spend your rage to do more damage. I also get disoriented here. I, I completely disagree with that disorient. Our mage dies because of it. I get disoriented again. I, you tell me. But yeah, so another thing obviously is using high DPS trinkets. Those can be huge. As you saw, my fourth overall damage was a trinket. You know, if I was using Cataclysmic Brand, I mean, Jesus, I'd be doing, I'd be pumping here, but I played the cheat death here just to be a, a little safer, mostly for the tree boss. Uh, so on this boss, there really isn't much to think about as a tank. Uh, the active boss right now the one that has to go on it is going to cast on the tank and it can hit pretty hard but you know usually as you can see people usually interrupt it so it's usually pretty chill and i usually try to interrupt the ads that are not active because those are the ones that are going to be casting on the dps so try to alleviate some of the uh healer issues here by interrupting the ads as we got a late lust there I, I was actually thinking we might just we might just do this lustless I don't know why, but like I just I used to be the kind of person to like type in you know chat lust lust lust. I just don't care anymore, dude. Like if you're not gonna lust, you're just not gonna lust. I'm just gonna press my buttons. But another thing, as you guys can see, is I'm just using any cooldown I get when it, I can. I'm not holding bark skin for anything. I rage the sleeper. Th there is no point to save, especially on a boss like this where the damage is just super consistent. Also increases your damage through brambles and uh, just rage of the sleeper and tear set and whatnot. As you can see, I'm jumping just because uh, you know, got that ADHD going on. Uh, as for doing big damage on bear, another thing that you know you have to realize is there's going to be a difference when you're doing easy content versus hard content. You know, I say spend most of your rage on Maul and Raze, but there's going to get to a point where if you do that, you could just die to auto attacks, and you're right. So you're going to have to start spending more rage on Iron Fur. That's why I really like the Thorns of Iron talent because even though you're spending, or even though you have to spend rage on Iron Fur, at least you're still doing a little bit of damage with that. But don't like don't feel bad if you're using Iron Fur a lot. You know, you're gonna see pulls is like on the tree boss, I'm essentially spamming Iron Fur. Yeah, I might be losing damage, but that's just, you know, the price you gotta pay when you're you know, you start doing harder content. I do hold in card here. This next pull, same thing. Like the main pain points with bolstering are gonna be in the court uh, room area and a little later on in this initial area it's not really that big of an issue. So I pull everything here. There, the, my when I do this pull, my main thought process is to interrupt spirit of defense because I just it's so unfun when it goes off and you know you're doing less damage and the pack lives longer. So and I let everyone else interrupt the you know runic bolts and whatever other cast they do. Uh, yeah. So see here, I have all my cooldown, so I'm raising a lot more. You know. It, People will say the general rule is to you know maintain one stack of iron fur and then maze and maul. But again, that you know that's assuming that you're doing fairly easy content. You're not taking that much uh, physical damage. So here I'll pause for a second. So in this area, these hounds bolster the mobs. So if I just ran in here, pulled all of the hounds, the thorn guards, it would it'd be a wipe. You know I I can't stop every cast. I, I'm only one human or one bear, I suppose. So what I do here is I pull these hounds back. And now, I mean, it, I mean, this is obviously, a, you know, if this wasn't a bolstering week, this is a pretty troll pull. But because it's bolstering, I mean, I'm I'm probably saving a wipe here by doing this. And as you'll see here in a second, I don't, I, I still, I don't run in there. There's still more hounds out there, so I stay back. I pull these, and now these hounds shouldn't, uh, or they're not going to bolster the 
Well, they, they're going to bolster the Stone Shaper, but, you know, stopping one mob from casting is way easier than stopping several, so... I try to Typhoon the mob here, but it, he's, of course, near a wall, so it doesn't work. One. Doesn't really matter, though. Helps it's it. tyrannical, so pretty vibey. Now, because, uh, you know, bolstering's over, I can go in. I, I'll pull a pickle here, just so we're not killing two mobs. This area to the right, where you go into the house, there are some pulls in there. What, like as you're pulling them out of the house, you can absolutely just evaporate. It's happened to me. It's happened to you know pugs when I, you know, play DPS. So I'll, I'll talk about my thought process and the buttons I press to not just die immediately. I'm trying to get as many uh, of the afflicted as I can to help our healer out. You can ensue those guys. So this first, this first pull is super easy. Like there's not really much to think about. So yeah, what I end up doing here is I, I I typically pull the whole hallway, but I remembered that I didn't pull these two thorn shapers, and I don't really want to pull them in with the uh, matron chick behind us. So I just go in there, pull a few mobs, and pull them out with these thorn shapers. One big thing you should be thinking about is any mobs in this courtyard area, if you drag them through fire, you're going to do a, a quite a significant amount of damage to them. It'll speed up the pull quite a bit. I don't end up doing it for any of the pulls right now, but I do do it with this uh, Brindle chick. I guess that's her name, Brindle. I don't even know that's how you pronounce it. Matron. I just call her Matron. So you'll see some people in high keys, they'll CC the hound so they don't bolster this uh, Brindle girl. I don't really understand why. I guess it would be an issue for the tank, but I mean, as you can see, my health just... I mean, it's not moving, and that was a thir three bolster. Here's a three bolstered barrage. I don't have any all I have right now is iron fur and my tear set, and my health is moving. But right here, see, I pulled her into the fire. Does a little bit of damage to her, speeds it up. Uh, let me see what I do next here. Do I just pull the rest of the hallway? Yeah. So as you can see, my health does is gonna move. You know, if you don't, if I didn't, or is it? Oh, geez. oh yeah see just you know if you can if you know if you're gonna take quite a bit of damage as long as you have 15 uh rage you know you can just send out a frenzied regen and you should be completely fine as i did there uh there was afflicted in the hallway but since we are, are in los i didn't worry about dispelling those ones Three, two, one. Help spirit. This these pulls with these uh, I I I think it's the gorgers that do the leap and the bleed that can be in super super bad, but it's tyrannical. Even on bolstering, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so this is the pull right here with all of these mobs that I have evaporated on, and I've seen multiple tanks just get deleted on. Uh, th the reason I'm doing this pull now is because I have incarn, and you'll see I go in with incarn, and I'm why well, I'm very see look at this boom incarn, I'm chilling. I, I'm still dying though a little. Well, I guess not really. I, I've been made fun of for you know, complaining about dropping to 99% health, but you know if you're playing well as a bear on a key like this on tyrannical, I mean really your you know your health should be fairly stable if you're using your defenses enough. But uh, because I'm an incarnate and rage the sleeper here, I'm spamming rays to try to do as much damage as possible. Good thing about rays is if you're running Urshax Fury, you're also getting massive absorb shields. Of course, these stewards have more HP than everyone else, so they're going to bolster and do quite a bit of d uh, tank damage to me. And I think, do we have deaths here? Yeah, we end up having deaths here, so this is not ideal. I could use Survival Instincts here, but I ended up just holding it and just sending my Renewal there. Didn't even have to Renewal, honestly. One thing you'll see me do quite often is just cast a Renewal when I don't really have to, and the only reason I do that is because it's off the GCD, and Frenzy Regen is, and I like doing damage, so, you know, instead of wasting a global on a zero damage ability, I'll just send the Renewal, because else, elsewise I'll probably never end up using it. Alright, I uh, in-capped where to stop uh, a cast, I don't even remember which one it was, <laughs> but... As a tank, you know... I Maybe this is an unpopular opinion, but especially in a pug, you should pr pretty much always be top interrupt in a pug. I I have I have I don't think I've ever looked at the interrupts in a key, and I've not been the top. That's one way you can 
try to carry as a non prop paladin avenger demon hunter is going into a pull assuming you're going to have to stop every important Three, cast two, one. bear's pretty good for it because you know obviously we have the melee kick but we also have a 30 second massive aoe interrupt plus typhoon i, I like to run the minus five second cooldown for honestly no reason it's pretty much useless i don't use uh it or i don't use typhoon enough to really get value out of it but as you can see, as I talked about in my last commentary here, instead of just swiping as I'm gathering mobs, I thrash and then I use my momentum to keep me going forward as I turn my camera around to mangle. That's going to be way more damage, way more rage, way tankier than just spamming swipe. Three, two, one. So here, yeah, the reason I'm pulling trash and not killing the Goliath is because I want the... I want lust up, but... You know, Lust is in an awkward position right now where if we kill the pig boss, it's going to sit on cooldown for a while. So I ended up just uh, typing here, uh, Lust when it's up, and we do. We do have some deaths here, as, we'll, as you'll see. So as a tank on this boss, you, you only ever want to clear when you have to absolutely clear as a tank, or else you're going to die. I think we clear once in this fight. Uh, my health, uh, or uh, I do come kind of close to dying. One thing I like about the cheat death trinket is, you know, if it doesn't proc, it's the, like the worst trinket in the game. It's just a terrible stat stick, which, you know, I completely understand. But one th invaluable thing you gain from it is the mindset that like you're just completely relaxed. Like I am st stress free right now. I know that if I die, it doesn't even matter. I have a cheat death in the bag. That's my favorite thing about it. So I end up setting SI there because I'm taking a lot of damage. I'm trying so like my, like my thought pressure right now is just live till incarn, live till incarn. I renewal. I frenzy regen. Like please get the incarn. Now I'm completely chilling. This is one of those fights where. I tried to iron I'm iron fring a lot more than mauling here. Trying to get as close to the armor cap as I can. Which I believe six axes of iron fur is the armor cap and as you can see, even on a single target when you're an incarn and you're running specific talents, it's pretty easy to do. So yeah, here's the one and only clear we're gonna do at forty as forty five stacks. Uh, I tank the I try to tank the boss away from the adds because they're gonna be chasing the healer down and I don't want the healer to die. I've th someone does die here. I think it's yeah, it's this team hunter, I believe. Yeah. Three, two, one. No more battle reses, so pretty. We're in a pretty scary position. The boss still has the boss has enough HP to where if everyone died right now, I probably would not be able to solo it. So similar to the totem boss in Thorn of the Tides, when there's a Soul Thorns going out and I have a Tooth and Claw proc, I raise instead of Maul to still damage the Soul Thorn, but also apply the 15% DR to the boss. And like I said, you know, if this is really causing you issues or this boss is causing you issues, you, you know, you could just run Earth Warden see if that helps you know if you think about it this boss is auto attacking for hundreds and hundreds of thousands i'm sure it gets to you know maybe even a million but uh you know earth warden 30 percent of that 30 percent of a million is a massive absorb so this boss kind of goes to all hell i have to solo save it at the end biggest thing on this boss Obviously, is not to leave melee range. If you leave melee range, it's just an immediate wipe. That's why I pretty much am always hugging the boss. I just don't want to risk it. I have wiped to the group to leaving melee. It's one of those fights where, in my opinion, melee range isn't very generous. It could be a little bit bigger, but it is what it is. Boss doesn't really do that much tank damage, so I can maul a lot more here for more damage. Not even really sure how people die on this fight, or I know how people could die on this fight. I just don't know how we're, people end up dying here. 
One thing I could be doing is moonfiring the ads. I do moonfire them eventually, but just to help them die a little bit faster. Oh yeah, see our mage died. I don't even know how, but now we have to go the entire fight with them dead, which is really bad. Three, two, well, you know, if you ha if you have someone die in this fight and you don't, or and it's really early, the servants that come out, there's a much higher chance that they're gonna reach the boss and they do end up reaching the boss eventually but it's when the, the fight's about to end so it's not that big of a deal yeah see here I, I recognize you know mage is dead gotta help as much as damage as I can typhoon the mobs away you can Ursul's vortex if you you can I believe Ursul's vortex two of them and typhoon them to try to group them up a little bit more so you can cleave them down but it's not that big of a deal. Send Incarn here. Things go south pretty fast here. I don't know when it is but. Three, two, one. Help spirit. Yeah, as you can see there, I Ursula's Vortex. I'm going to Typhoon here, gather them up. One thing that's kind of counter about this fight is if it lasts really long, you're going to get so many of these puddles on the ground, it's going to be very hard to find a spot to where you can stand straight away where you're not just soaking in a puddle. Ooh, look at the priest casting that penance of Iliog sick. <laughs> uh, one thing I found pretty amusing was, I don't show it in the video, but I inspected our demon hunter and his gear was terrible. He had like f 470 weapons. That was pretty crazy. I can show all of my gear at the end of the video, I guess, like my helmet and whatnot. So yeah, here the boss is gonna consume some people. I've cheat dev, so I'm I'm vibing right now. I do. I, Incarnate is coming up, and I panic use it just to kill the boss. I think I incarn like three times on this fight. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, so I spam incarn, frenzied regen. One. Help spirit. Yeah, I'm, it's honestly not that scary here. Everyone ends up releasing. First key of the day. All right, we can skip this because we're just waiting for people. So one thing I see some tanks do is they'll they'll just go ahead. Like they they think, oh, we're fighting one mob. Let let's run ahead. But this mob is you can't really do that with this mob, right? Because of Etch, when she's casting Etch, she doesn't move. So. Just relax. It's okay. This timer isn't exactly tight. So I'm just, you know, holding still. Oh, no, we're killing one mob. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you run ahead and your DPS are getting killed by Etch. So here, there's these hounds again with bolstering. Not going to pull anything crazy. Just going to make sure these mobs die so we don't bolster the matron or any other mobs. Pretty lucky here with the pat. I pull Alma with these two. There, there's two very important. Helps. Well, I guess one really important interrupt and one's pretty important interrupt. The really important one is Runa's Volley. If that goes up, or if that goes off when someone's or when the Rune Weaver's casting Etch, it could just be someone's dead. And then making sure you're interrupting Spirit of Defense just so the mob die and the healer doesn't have to heal for another minute or whatever. I'm not a huge fan of the route I do here, as you'll see. After these mobs die, we don't even have enough percentages to go down. So I have I pull two extra mobs, and I don't know if I pulled the tr other trash pack, but somebody ends up pulling it. So we're gonna be like six percent over count, which it's not the end of the world. We almost double chested it, so maybe if we didn't do that, we would have double chested it. But whatever. So yeah, here I try to pull these two. I kick the guy in the back who's already been kicked and those mobs end up coming yeah i think it was me 
So I accidentally pulled this pack. We didn't need it. Not terrible. Help spirit. I believe the fear goes off. I could have stopped it, but I was looking at the... Yeah, right, hor horrific visage goes off. I could have stopped it. I had a uh, in-cap or and typhoon, but I was tunnel visioning on the afflicted, which I didn't even end up dispelling. I try to dispel as many as I can. If, if there's two, if there's one, ideally the healer gets it, but if there's two, you know, theoretically, my damage as a tank shouldn't be as high as a DPS, so it's better for me to spend the global than a, the monk. But uh, our people end up doing a really good job at it. I don't have to do with that much this key. I, I think you need 91% going down here, and we have 95, so yeah, we're going to be about 4% over count. Here, kind of unlucky. I like to pull this three pack alone, but I end up pulling the other soul charmer, and now they're casting freely. Somebody dies here. I, th I could have, I should have incapped her right now, but as you can see, because I don't, I, I do it late. Our demon hunter dies. Deaths here are so bad because now we're down a kick, and a we stop, and these mobs are gonna last way longer. Use your kick off cooldown here. Really, anything, every everything here is an important cast. Can't really hold it. Use your A we stops on the uh, essences if you can. A monk goes down, but I, Demon Hunter's pretty fast getting here, so Three, we don't end up wiping, one. thankfully. Help spirit. Yeah, not really much to talk about here. I'll just skip ahead. Next pack is the exact same thing. Okay, let's not go that fast, slow bro. Can I can I just do this? Whatever. So sometimes the soul charmers when they cast their warding candle, they won't even cast for like a half a second, so you can just immediately move them out. So when you do see them casting warding candles, just move out of melee for a second to see if they don't cast. And then just be ready to interrupt them if they do cast to move them out of the candles. Three, this boss can do quite a bit of tank damage one. when he casts his uh, Wasting Strike. You, you, ideally, you have a defensive up for every single one, but even if you don't, as long as you have a Frenzied Regen ready to, to use, you should be fine. Other than that mechanic, this boss doesn't really do much tank damage, so just, just laying mauls into the boss as, as many as I can. Look at the new shifting power animation, absolutely bonkers. When this mechanic is happening, you you kind of want to try to move the boss in a very predictable way so the DPS can keep uptime on it. You know, if you're moving all sporadic, you're dropping the puddles everywhere, your DPS are going to have to move away and lose uptime. We do save less for the last boss, which I think is the right play. Last boss is so weird. It feels so easy, but the higher you go, I, I suppose it can be a one-shot check on every uh, explosion he does. This boss, I mean, if you have a prop paladin and range interrupts, you you can actually interrupt L L Lady Waycrest from this platform. You just got to make sure you're standing on the edge. I can't do that, but I'm pretty sure a mage could, but I don't think they uh, they don't end up doing that. Doesn't end up mattering. Yeah, right there. I didn't have a defensive up for the strike, so I just friended regen, and I'm completely okay. Not really sure what happens right here, but... Weird game. So here, I, I just funnel off of Lady Waycrest. Bear actually does have funnel. If you... If I mauled, I had decent funnel, but I just raised to... Mostly for the pad, if I'm going to be honest. I still have that DPS mentality, Oops. trying to do as much DPS as possible. I hold Incarn here for the next pull. Next pull's pretty chill. Doesn't really do that much tank damage, as long as you have something, anything, bark skin or whatever. I have seen people pull this with the boss, but we have plenty of time and it's a pug, so just play it safe, pull it by itself. We get an afflicted in the pack. 
I try to dispel it, it doesn't work, and Afflicted goes off, or it goes off here. Yeah, I, I love when Afflicted goes off. It's so much fun having a half haste. Oh, Jesus. Love it. Yeah, I think I can see it going off. Boom. God damn, look at my, look at my haze. This next boss bear is pretty solid because you can stop every single ad cast. If you just cycle through Incap Roar and Typhoon, you can stop every every ad. Typhoon's kind of cancer because you push the mob away. So you can try to Ursul's Vortex when you have it, but you're not going to be able to Ursul's and uh, Typhoon every single two, one. one. So there, Incap Roar... Raise as much as I can when there's two targets. This is one of those bosses where, like, as a tank or as a bear at least, I, like, there's some times where I'm just dying and I really don't know why. I don't know what does damage on this fight as a tank. I think the boss's melee is pretty hard. Three, two, one. Help spirit. That's pretty much it. The, the, the bolstering. Is I was, it's a hard, definitely a hard affix. I, I'd say the hardest dungeon is Everbloom, but like I said, routing can make it such so much easier to deal with. You just have to know what's dangerous and what is bad to bolster. And if you're playing a DPS, you know if you go into a pack knowing what's dangerous, you can just funnel off of it or try to single target it down. Can't expect that as a in a pug though. Pugs are unpredictable, so that's why, you know, you saw in the courtyard area, I pulled it super slow, super easy. I'm, I do show my breakdown of my damage and healing if you care, and I, I do want to show you guys something very important. Three, very two, important. One. More important than damage. Maybe not, but... Oh, that's it. What, what the hell am I doing? That's it. That's the dungeon. I get a vial somehow. It is what it is. I loot. Do I get anything? I get some gold. Let's go. All right. Let's go into WoW here. Damage done. You know, a good way to tell if you're doing something right is if raise is number one. If your goal is to do damage, if raise is the number one, it's not the end of the world, but... If you're trying to do as much damage as possible, you're gonna want to raise. You want to swipe. You want to cast raise more than you cast swipe. If you're casting swipe more than you cast raise, oh my lanta, that is not ideal. So oh, augury doing absolutely bonkers things. Mangle powerful ability. Thrash powerful. Moonfire very powerful. Maul, see even Maul. Maul did, did more damage than melee launch thorns. Because I'm using it so much on a single target. As for healing, another nice thing with the raise is if you're running Artifacts Fury, yeah, as you can see, that's a ton of absorbing over the course of a dungeon. This is always my top healing. Blazing Thorns coming in clutch. Looks pretty standard to me, but here's the most important thing, like I said earlier. This thing, it's a little tip for you guys on how to be successful in a pug, okay? What I want you to do. Right click, interrupts. Do you guys see this? Notice how I'm number one by a quadruplic of freaking mile? This is what you want to see. You know, obviously there's going to be times where you want to hold your interrupt for something super important, but more often than not, just setting it off cooldown is going to help so much throughout a key. Your healer is going to be less stressed. You're going to die less. So, like, that's one thing I never really... What's happening here? Like, as a DPS, like, don't you not want to die? So why don't you just interrupt more? Like, if you die to a missed a kick, like, that's on you, bruh. Uh, one thing I don't do is I don't use, like, damage potions. I could, but it's just so much gold. I don't like spending gold. That's how I have so much gold, is just not spending it. Uh, I think that's all I have, though. I mean... Pretty chill run. Waycrest is one of my favorite dungeons. Super chill. The only hard part is the Goliath, but, you know, there's some cheat codes with Earth Warden. Earth Warden isn't like a, you know, 100% get out of jail free card, but it can definitely help. 
Also, don't be afraid to run, you know, more defensive trinkets. Augury doesn't really do anything defensively. I guess you get a little bit of crit, but, you know, you could run... If you have Fro if I had Froxmoan Heart, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, I'd be running that instead of Augury, just for the extra a million absorb. But, you know, Porcelain Crab has some, you know, somewhat defensive value through Mastery and Avoidance. That's pretty much it, to be honest. But, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I didn't I guess I didn't really talk about bolstering that much. The biggest thing is just, you know, being aware of what's dangerous in a dungeon and what you can and cannot bolster. Um, here we can do this. So where's the start? So you know, this pull. If you do this big pull, it's not that big of a deal. Big thing is here with these hounds. You know, like it's typically you run in here you just pull all of this the hounds don't really do anything but with bolstering i mean first off the thorn guard could just kill you for your tank and if any casts go off with this many stacks of bolstering it's it's just going to kill somebody so just take a second you know observe what's happening if you know stuff like this bolsters then just pull it back don't need to rush it as you know if you're doing a pull and some mob is giga bolster don't be afraid to run away i typically giga chat it out and just take it to the face but you can run away it's all good i mean no one likes kiting but you know if it's gonna save a death might as well do it also you know she does drink it ter not terrible I i'm just yapping right now though thank you for watching like subscribe tell your friends tell your friends bears actually decent Peace.